The Battle of Turkumen was a battle fought on 24 and 25 September 1812 near the Argentine city of San Miguel de Tucumán. During the Argentine War of Independence, the Army of the North, commanded by General Manuel Belgrano, defeated the Royalist troops commanded by General Pio de Tristan, who had a 2-to-1 advantage in numbers, halting the Royalist advance on Argentina's northwest. Together with the Battle of Salta on 20 February 1813, the victory at Tucumán allowed the Argentine troops to reaffirm the borders under their control. Prelude The Upper Peru region was again under royalist control after the rebel defeat at Huaki, where the inexperienced commander Juan José Castelli was easily defeated by the royalist army. The orders from the First Triumvirate had placed Belgrano in command of the Army of the North on 27 February 1812, headquartered in Jujuy. From there Belgrano attempted to raise the morale of the troops after the defeat at Huaki. Under that effort on 25 May he raised in Jujuy the new flag he had created a few months back and had it blessed in Jujuy's cathedral by Father Juan Ignacio de Goretti. He soon realized that he did not have enough strength to defend the city, and on 23 August he ordered a massive retreat of all the civilian population to the interior of Tucumán province in what was later known as the Exodor, Jujena. Civilians and military men retreated, destroying anything that could be of value to the royalists. When the Spaniards entered the city, they found it empty. It was deserted and in ruins. And I was horrified of the sad image of those empty houses and those silent streets after the joyful images from times gone by, Tristan wrote to his superior, Peru's viceroy, José Manuel de Goyeniche. Belgrano cannot be forgiven. On orders from the Triumvirate, the Army of the North had to create a stronghold in Cordoba. Instead, Belgrano had the idea of stopping farther north in Tucumán, where the local population was eager to support the army. The 3rd of September victory at the Battle of Las Piedras between his rearguard and two advance royalist columns confirmed his ideas. He captured the column commander, Colonel Huichi, and about 20 soldiers. He sent Juan Ramón Balcas towards the city, ordering him to recruit and train a cavalry troop from the local militia, and deliver letters to the rich and powerful Araos family, one of whose members, Lieutenant Gregorio Araos de la Madrid, was among Belgrano's best officers. The decision, consolidate or give battle. Balcas's mission, along with the rumors that his army was retreating to Cordoba, caused consternation in the city. The Cabildo bells rang and the legislature, in public session, decided to send three representatives, officers Bernabe Araos and Rudicando Alvarado and the priest Dr. Pedro Miguel Araos, to Belgrano, to ask that he face the Spanish at Tucumán. Arriving in Tucumán on 13 September, Belgrano met Balcas with 400 men, without uniforms and with only lances for weapons, but well organized, and the city ready to support them. Belgrano, historians say, did not need more than that pretext to disobey the triumvirate's retreat orders and stay. He said he would stay if they supplied him with 1,500 cavalry troops, and if they gave him 20,000 silver pesos for the troops, amounts that the legislature decide to grant. Therefore he ignored the triumvirate's orders of retreat and instead entrenched in Tucumán. At the same time, the royalist army had difficulty advancing, not finding in the scorched earth tactics supplies or places to stay and rest. Local irregulars organized by the militias were harassing them constantly. On 23 September, Tristan received the news that the rebel army was in the city and ready for battle. Combat in the morning of the 24th, Tristan ordered a march towards the city. Sources say that instead of taking the straight road in, he rounded the central plaza from the south, attempting to prevent a possible rebel movement towards the south. 
Others say that in the village of Los Positos he found burning fields ordered by Dragoon's Lieutenant La Madrid, who counted on the fierceness of the fire and the wine to disorganize the Spanish column. In the meantime, taking advantage of the confusion created by the fire, Belgrano, who had placed his troops in the very early morning at the north side of the town, had changed his front facing west counting on having a clear image of Tristan's troop movements. Once he saw them, the quick advance over Tristan's flank barely gave him time to reorganize his front and mount the artillery formation. Belgrano had organized his cavalry in two wings, the right, commanded by Balcast, was the bigger of the two, as it included the local gaucho troops recently recruited. The infantry was divided in three columns, commanded by Colonel Jose Superi on the left, Captain Ignacio Warns at the center, and Captain Carlos Forrest on the right, plus a section of dragoons, supported the cavalry. A fourth reserve column commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Manuel Dorego and Baron Eduardo Kaunitz of Homburg was placed between the infantry columns, but was too divided to be effective. The artillery initiated the battle, bombarding the Cotabumbus and Abangai battalions, who responded with a bayonet charge. Belgrano ordered a response by having Warns charge with his infantry, along with the cavalry reserve of Captain Antonio Rodriguez. While Balcares's cavalry charged over Tristan's left flank, the charge had a formidable effect. With lances pointed, and macking loud sounds and shouts, they made the royalist cavalry of Tarria disband at their charge. It is impossible to know what effect charging from their inner pinso movement would have had with a rebel force composed of country folk without military discipline. A good portion of the gaucho cavalry broke formation to capture the mules loaded with supplies, including coins and precious metals from the royalist army. They therefore negated their use of supplies and ammunition. Only the dragoons and regular cavalry under Balcar stayed in formation at the front, but the loss of their supplies and baggage was enough to disorganize the royalist wing. On the other side of the front the results were very different where Belgrano was fighting. The royalists' cavalry and infantry advance was unstoppable, with Colonel Superi being taken as prisoner. Even though the strength of the central column allowed the rebels to regain terrain and release Superi, the unequal advances fractured the front, creating a confused battle. The commanders had trouble seeing what was happening and often the decisions were taken by the local unit officers in the heat of battle. At that time a swarm of locusts appeared on the fields, which obscured the battlefield and confused the soldiers. Tristan attempted to retreat to organize his troops, abandoning his artillery, and in the course found Dorego's column virtually unprotected, along with the troop of infantry of Eustachio Diaz Velez. They recovered 39 wagons loaded with arms and ammunition which were taken to the city, along with the cannon they could push. The rebels also took many prisoners in the flags of the Cotabumbus, Abinjai and Real de Lima regiments. Belgrano, at the time not knowing the result, was attempting to reorganize his troops when he found Colonel Jose Moldis, who was his main observer. Both then found Paz, and threw him what remained of the cavalry. Balcas joined them a while later, being the first to be bold and qualify the battle as a victory. Judging by the body-covered field and Spanish equipment remains, even though they did not yet know the fate of the main infantry regiments and what was happening inside the city, it took General Belgrano the rest of the afternoon to reorganize the troops. At the same time, Tristan was evaluating the loss of his ammunition, most of his artillery and supplies. He ordered the rest of his army, which had lost more than a thousand men between dead and wounded, to form an advance on the city and demand their surrender under threat of burning it. Diaz Velez and Dorego, strong in the city by now, responded by threatening to kill the prisoners, including four colonels. If Tristan set fire to the city, the Spaniards spent the night outside, in doubt over the course to follow. The following morning he found Belgrano's troops at his rear, who demanded his surrender through Colonel Moldis. 
The royalist commander responded that, the king's soldiers do not surrender, so Tristan retreated towards Salta, while being followed and harassed by 600 men commanded by Diaz Velez. Results even though the victory at Tucuman, writes Mitre, was the result of unforeseen circumstances, it earns Belgrano the glory of having won a battle against all probabilities and against the wishes of his own government, the material abandoned by the Spaniards, 13 cannons. 358 muskets, 39 wagons, 70 ammunition boxes and 87 tents, would serve the Army of the North in the subsequent campaign. 450 royalists lost their lives in combat and 690, between officers and soldiers, were captured as prisoners. On their side, the defenders only had 80 dead and 200 wounded. On 27 October they celebrated a Thanksgiving Mass, in the procession that carried the statue of the Virgin de las Mercedes. Belgrano deposited his command baton, proclaiming the saint as general of his army. Moldus and Homburg would lead the army, but Belgrano would gain Juan Antonio Alvarez de Arenales with whom he would start on 12 January the march towards Salta, where the royalists had entrenched. The victory consolidated the work of the revolution and momentarily ended the danger of a disaster for the rebel forces. If the Patriot Army would have retreated as ordered, the North Provinces would have been lost to the enemy whom of controlling a vast territory would have reached Cordoba, where it would have been easier to receive the help from the royalists at the Banda Oriental and the Portuguese troops from Brazil. The victory also had important political consequences, as Belgrano, who had allies in the Logia Lautaro, had defeated the invader against orders from his government and vindicated the request of the opposition, when they asked for help to be sent to the Army of the North. In Buenos Aires, three days after the victory was known, the first triumvirate was overthrown in the revolution of 8 October. The second triumvirate allowed the army soldiers to wear a medal with the inscription, La Patria a su defensa en Tucuman, and also ordered that the names of the soldiers be inscribed in the Book of Honor of the respective cabildos of Buenos Aires and Tucuman. Belgrano was offered a promotion to Captain General, but he declined the honor.